hello and welcome back to the channel everybody we're out for another awesome beautiful winter solo ride here in dupont state forest and uh today we're gonna do a bit of a unorthodox route here that i've never done before but the unorthodox part of this whole thing is that in order to do this route i'm gonna have to start by climbing up ridgeline trail and uh I don't generally recommend doing this, and I certainly don't recommend doing it on the weekend ever. Um, but I'm gonna do it. Seth has told me it's a great route and we'll see. One of the reasons I'm here today is because this trail got a rework. Look how fresh this is. So what I'm doing today is I'm connecting a pretty substantial, three big trails, three really good downhills for quite a bit of vert in a day of downhilling in DuPont. So it'll start out with my new favorite trail in, in the park called Stone Mountain. Hands down the gnarliest downhill. And you can link that in straight into another really great lesser known trail. And that is called uh, Rocky Ridge, I believe. And then a small connection from that brings you straight here to Ridgeline. And those three overall get you around 2,000 feet of descending with not a lot of climbing in between. So you kind of put in all the effort right here at the beginning. So decent ways into climbing up Ridgeline. And I definitely can say it, it, they put a lot of work into this. And you know, it made me, it got me thinking about the people that I've heard complaining about this. And I just, I want to discourage people from doing that. The number one complaint I've heard from just random people is that they dumbed down Ridgeline. And look, if you were riding Ridgeline as like your tech trail, you already have it all wrong. This was never a tech trail. This was a extremely flowy trail. And, you know, so all they did was make a flow trail more flowy. That's all they did. I really <coughs> don't like hearing when people bash other people for liking a certain type of trail. Like, why, why we gotta be like that? We're mountain bikers. It's in our, it's in our blood. Like, part of the mountain biking culture is doing whatever the f you want. So how are you gonna hate on someone for going and doing what they like? Like, well, how are you gonna hate on someone for liking flow trails, for wanting something that's smooth and buttery, or for liking slow tech? Like, yo, just everyone ride what you like. We're lucky enough to actually have the options of it all, you know? People don't like change. Like, that is the crux of it all. But when you go around talking crap about work that's been done on trails <clears throat> because it's not like what you would have done or what you would have preferred all you're really accomplishing is belittling the people that put in the hours and hours and hours of hard work and a lot of times it's volunteers so it's like especially lame so yeah that's that's what i'm thinking as i'm pedaling up this it seems like exactly the same trail just in better condition like i don't get it all right, I'll stop now. <laughs> Holy cow, that was so much easier than I thought it would be. I'm already at the top, I saw one person going down, that was it. So now, we are gonna actually go find a gravel road and climb up to the north of the park towards Guion Farms. Going on a little adventure. Gosh, it's so nice out. Looks like they've been doing some logging out here in the back of DuPont. Look at that. Some big clear. Well, that's not big clear, but at least not if you're out west. Man, I haven't been back here since they've been doing all this. I wonder what this is. A lot of work happening at DuPont. I like to see it. All right, we have found Sky Valley Road. And now I kind of know where I am. Oh, but still quite a bit of climbing left, so goodbye again. All right, we've made it to single track again. Honestly, 
not bad. Although hands down the worst climb is yet to come. As some of you guys were pointing out in the comments, man, every time that I say not bad, I feel like that's just an indicator that I've gotten that much more fit lately. Uh, and it feels good, man. Now the real struggle begins. Oof, it's so rocky in here. Dude, what is this? Oh yeah, so on the way down, you take that rock on the right. To get up, I have no idea. What? Come on. Holy, oh my gosh. That hurts so bad. We're so close. This is the crux of stone. I can't climb this. I can barely get down this, to be perfectly honest. Last time I rode this is when I bashed my chain ring, gave it a nice dent or fold. And uh, thankfully, thanks to Seth and uh, one of the fans of the channel, I now have a 3D printed <laughs> bash guard on here, right there. So hopefully that won't happen again. All right, I'm just gonna show this to you guys while I climb up <laughs> because coming down, you just can't do it justice. Just note, I'm having a hard time pushing up right now. And right up here, I'm gonna have to pick up the bike. It gets so steep. <laughs> this section right here, this turn in particular is so rowdy. Ah, yes, I've made it. Oh, it's kind of windy up here. Right here, we can just hop off. Oh gosh! Ah! <laughs> up here is really, really rad. I'm a fan. It's uh, it's super chill. Most of the time there's no one else up here. So uh, yeah, I dig it. Real quick before we get into this downhill, just a quick injury update, elbow, wrist, all that. Um, I just wanna say I was really, I really appreciate everyone that commented. It seemed like I kind of struck a chord with a lot of you guys on the channel. I don't think, I think most of us are not quite as young as we once were. And um, as, as people that do stuff like mountain bikes, we're kind of like starting to come to terms with what that means and what that's gonna look like going forward if we wanna continue all this, which is kind of a, a difficult outlook. I, I am beginning to understand where the saying um, of getting old is not for the weak or the, the faint of heart, because realizing how much work I'm gonna have to put into maintaining my health and my fitness so that I can continue to do the things that like really truly drive me and inspire me and and that like make life worthwhile I'm really gonna have to put in a ton a ton of work it's gonna be hard it's gonna be tough but um it's kind of not it was nice to hear it, it was really nice to hear in the comments a lot of y'all have had very similar issues. A lot of you guys ha are, are ahead of me on this journey and already had, you know, sage words of advice. So I, I really do appreciate, I honestly appreciate you guys sharing that with me and being, being able to uh, know that I'm not alone in this uh, struggle, you know, cause I'm gonna be honest, it's been in, incredibly frustrating as, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, but um, you know, I'm on this journey trying to get fit <clears throat> and for the last like three weeks, I haven't been able to do anything. I was like on such a roll. And then the the getting fit made me unfit. It like, it's just so frustrating. I, you know, I'm gonna have, I realize I'm just gonna have to be patient with it, patient with my body, you know? I can't just go hard six days a week out of the blue and expect my body to be okay with it. And that's something I'm gonna have to realize because I definitely used to be able to do that. Um, you know, I'm impatient. So when I decide that I want to get fit, I get fit like really quick. And I now know that I can't do that. So I'm having to be really kind of, I'm doing my physical therapy. It's helping. 
I've been a lot more conscious about how much I do and how frequently, like tomorrow I won't go ride after this just because I can't, I can't overdo it. I don't want to risk being off the bike totally for another three weeks. So, um, but overall things are going well. I have an awesome physical therapist, a friend of mine from way back when I worked at REI. Uh, she is a physical therapist, which is a great friend to have and know, especially when they're so good. Um, but yeah, just quick little update before we hit the downhill here. So I hope my elbows can keep up with this. <laughs> this will be a test. This will, this will certainly be a test. All right. The time has come. The sampler gloves are going on. Yes, they are still for sale in the Cognitive MTB website. I have a whole page dedicated to sampler kit, including the jersey that I've got on right now. And by the way, if you're sleeping on the Cognitive shorts, these are the best mountain bike pants in, in the game, in my opinion. I am really picky about my pants and uh, Cognitive is like the right price, the perfect durability. They have a really great waist uh, adjustment, which is like, is really nice for the fluctuations in the year. Um, they're like the perfect length and they have vertical zippers. Vertical zippers are the best. I don't know why everyone sleeps on them. I highly, highly recommend. All right, <clears throat> here we go. I start out right away with that crazy section, so I need to focus up after taking a bit of a rest. Come on. Let's go. Gosh, that's hairy in there. My goodness, that spot will get you, man. All right, let's send it. Let's bomb this. And by that, I mean ride very modestly because I'm nursing an injury. So last time, as you guys saw, this this section was super overground in the fall. And now that it's not, it's much faster, but still kind of hairy. Oh, oh gosh. That was super chunky. My goodness. Oh, oh. Jeez. My goodness! Ah! Holy sh! That's insane! Oh my gosh! Oh! oh my gosh! That's so full on! What? I didn't want to stop. But, oh my gosh, I did not ride that well. <laughs> Bad lines. Good times. To be perfectly honest, that's right up there with Pisca Descents, in my opinion. Like, I can't wait to have ridden that trail enough to know the lines, to have lines. That ride, that run right there was horrendous but it's the type of horrendous that makes it like, that makes it very exhilarating <laughs> when you're getting to learn a trail. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> we have a ton of downhill ahead of us. <sighs> Yet. Here we go down. 
the always fun ah, rocky road or rocky ridge and if you want to become a good corner this is the trail and you really want to focus on like the speed that you're going into them with so not coming in too hot being able to control your turn and not break inside the turn I came in too fast on that turn and didn't see through it came in too inside on that one so I slid out a lot of the reason you'll slide out in a turn is because you're breaking in the turn that's a huge reason you need to get your braking done before you're in the turn I gotta slow down my elbows hurting dang that's so frustrating <laughs> These girls behind me are having a freaking blast. They sound like me. All right, here's some of the toughest turns on this trail. I'm gonna try to really just do them smoothly. That was good. That was good. Pretty good. Decent. Really good. Really good. Really good. I see you, buddy. Thank you. There's two behind me. Yeah. Really, really good. So you can park here if all you do is Stone Mountain and Rocky Ridge. And then you take this trail right here, I think Rifle, Ruffed, Ruffed Grouse to uh, Rifle. And this will take us to our final downhill of the day, Ridgeline. All right. We have found our way back to the bottom of the Hickory Loop, which, man, you can just add that right in here, get even more feet of descending. I'm gonna forego it for now because the sun, and also because I'm not gonna lie, I think that Stone Mountain downhill was a little too much to ask, a little bit of a tall order for my elbow already. So um, I kind of feel like as as frustrating as it is I feel like I overdid it again like <sighs> all right <clears throat> so I have an idea because I overdid it on stone mountain downhill I'm gonna try to do or I am gonna do I've done it before I'm gonna do a no pedal lap on ridgeline so I'm gonna do my best to flow down the entire thing without a pedal without a single pedal stroke. Bye. Thank you, you too guys. <sighs> All right, no pedal challenge. So it's all about the corners and pumping. That's how I feel like I become a better rider is doing. That's like squandering speed right there. <laughs> Jumping, not jumps. But, just flow. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot easier with this rework, cause the, the trail is just in incredible shape. Pre-jump! Get going really fast. You wanna try not to break wherever you can. Avoid it. Definitely need to look ahead well. A little transfer there, man. That was sweet. Man, this is flowing incredibly. I mean, it is Ridgeline after all. So 
So far, easy. No pedal lap. And I don't think it's gonna be harder. Cool air opportunities in a lot of spots too. That could get you. That was a loose flat turn. Uh-oh. Do I have enough speed right here? Yeah. So I'm pumping these downs, I'm pumping the ups, I'm even pumping the corners to be honest. It's amazing how fast you can pick up speed without even pedaling. If you're doing all these things like aggressively, like I have not put in a pedal stroke still. Very important to hit that turn right. Oh, this feels good. Sharp one. Oh, a little loose. Fun inside jump right there. Poor manual by me there. Good race turns right here. Just so much support. This is an amazing no pedal lap. Oh my gosh. Who complained about this rework like? This has made Ridgeline even better for like an even better flow trail. Yoo oh my gosh, that's so good. Yo, everyone that worked on that, great job. You can't ride that without a just huge grin on your face. Like, wow. Let's see, that took me two and a half ish hours. And the beauty is, is once you start going down, it's like <clears throat> you don't climb much. All right. Wow, what a ride that was. And oh my gosh, I'm just so happy that I got my butt out and did it, man. I was feeling pretty stagnant and frustrated this whole week because of the elbow thing. And although I can't ride as hard as I want to still, it feels really good to just go do the ride. I do think I went a little bit too hard there, but how can you not? That ride was awesome. So I went ahead and added up the, I was too excited. I had to go ahead and add up the actual descending. And it really is almost 2000 feet. If you add Ridgeline plus Stone Mountain plus Rocky uh, Ridge, it's 1800 feet of descending. And there is trail in between those. So like you definitely hit 2000. And then if you add on Hickory Mountain Loop, you can get over 2000 feet of descending in DuPont State forest including some like double black gnar how sick is that i'm just stoked i got out for the ride and i want to thank you guys all as always for coming along on it with me just hanging out and you know whether you're watching this at work or watching it to fall asleep or just watching it while you have coffee in the morning or watching it on the trainer like thank you guys for just being here and watching my videos and sharing the stoke of riding your bike with me i can't tell you how much i appreciate it every single week um I will see you guys again 
very, very soon for another one. I'll keep you posted on how the injury, um, how the elbows and wrists and the strength training goes. A lot of you guys were asking me to continually follow up on that. So I will do that um, in the future. But until then, you guys all know what to do. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked. It's Friday, and I'm going to go get a beer. I'll see you later. Oh, hey, and real quick, I know that some of you guys are going to be in the comments asking for me to post this loop, and here's the thing. I don't pay for trail forks <laughs> or Strava, so I can't do that. But if someone could do that, if someone who already has all these could make that loop and post a link to it, I will pin it as the top comment um, for everyone else to see. So thank you ahead of time for whoever takes the second to do that. Y'all rock. All right, cheers.